Hi, I'm Jennifer Messenger Heilbronner, and I work with the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Leadership Programs. As we work with the fellows, leaders, and scholars in these programs, it's clear that there's no shortage of amazing stories to tell. Many of them are grounded in cutting-edge research and innovative approaches, so it's no surprise that making them clear and concise to many different audiences can be a challenge. In this module, we'll focus on continuing to fine-tune your message to make it relevant and actionable to the audiences you want to reach, whether that's funders, policymakers, partners, or people in your community. And you never know when you might be talking to someone who's a potential candidate for the leadership programs in the future. Today I'll share some tools and techniques to help you talk about your work and your leadership in a clear and concise way. We'll talk about moving from facts to values to make your message most relevant. We'll take a look at how that message can adapt and expand over the course of your work. And we'll talk about ways you can practice and build your skills to be a compelling spokesperson and stay with your message. The average person has an eight second attention span, so you have to be ready to hook them. Just to put this in perspective, here's why that message is so important. That makes a strong message, one that hooks people in those precious eight seconds, really valuable. And the most important word on this slide is value. When people receive and process information, they do it first through the lens of their values, those closely held ideas and values that guide how they think about the world. Then they start to amass facts and measure those against their values. So we can throw facts at them all day, but if those facts don't align with the values lens through which they read the world, they'll ignore the facts. So the trick is to identify the values that sit with your audience and align your facts and message to match those values. What do your audiences value? How do you connect to that? What do you value in your work? And what societal values does your work advance? Those are the core of your message. But that's not how most messages happen. Most people and organizations tell their story with facts first. They talk about themselves, who they are, what they do, why the work matters to them. So you get something like the arc on this slide. This happens because we true believers mistakenly believe that everybody shares the same values that we do, that our audiences will automatically make the connection between those values and the work we're doing. So we do things like talk about the health benefits of walking and share lots of facts about why walking is healthy. But when people really think about walking, what they care about is the connection that they make with others and their community when they walk. Or we talk about the melting ice caps and penguins when we talk about the risks of climate change, when people are much more concerned with their personal security first before abstract environmental facts and values. So look what happens here when we flip this message arc on its head. We start with the values our audience shares, or our best guess that we can make on those values based on conversation, experience, and other clues that we have about our audience. We state the problem we're trying to solve and we immediately connect that to their values, often through a compelling story or example. And that can even be hypothetical if you don't have a real one ready. We talk about what we're doing to address the problem and what brings us to the work. A great way to sustain and build interest here is to build in an element of surprise or an unexpected twist. What's really challenging you? What has other research found and what are the gaps that you're trying to fill through your work? There's an IRL team that works on housing in California. They've talked about how they might lead into their work by telling a story about three people, a successful activist who has met the Obamas, a dedicated mom, an aspiring writer, and ask, what do you think these three people have in common? What's in common is they all live in public housing and they all live in the project that this team is working on. That busts the myth about who lives in public housing and draws people into the story in an unexpected way. Then we share the change we hope to create. What will be different as a result of your work? How does the world change if your hypothesis is right? And we end with information about how the listener can get involved. That might be using your research when it's done or staying in touch with you to hear more about what you're learning or becoming a partner in your work. At the end of this arc, we've made a values connection 
we've told a full story that connects with those values, and we've left the reader or listener wanting more and ready to connect with us. That's a values-based message. At the heart of this approach is getting to why. Too often we start with what and we never leave. But often the more interesting piece of a message is the why. Why are you doing this work? Why is it necessary? Why should people care? Why will this make a difference when other efforts haven't? If you want to read more about why, I can recommend the work of Simon Sinek. He's got a great book called Start With Why, and there's also a really good talk on YouTube that summarizes his approach. It really gets you to the heart of the why in your message. Building on that values-based arc and the power of why, let me suggest a three-part message process to you. And this is something you can use whether you're putting together a short three or four minute message, even a 30 second message, or a much longer story. It gives you three distinct pieces of your message that you can build facts and stories onto. So the first is why are you doing this? And this is your chance to describe the conflict, the challenge, the opportunity at the heart of your work. What brought you here? What are you trying to explore? The second piece of your message is why does your work matter? What are you doing? What's it adding to the conversation? What new things are you exploring that haven't been uncovered before? And what are you learning? You might be in the middle of this, you don't know the answers yet, but even talking about what you're learning along the way can be great. And then finally, why should people stay engaged? Is there a call to action you want to offer them? Is there a cliffhanger you can set up where you are in the research and lead them to where you might be going? And can you link to the benefits of the program you're in? If you're a clinical scholar, why is clinical scholars a valuable part of helping you get to what you want to do? This is a great model to use, and let me give you some examples of how it works. This is one of the interdisciplinary research leaders team. They're working in Minnesota. This is Rebecca Polston, Rachel Hardiman, and Casey Cozumanal. Here's the project summary that they wrote that's on the program website for interdisciplinary research leaders. And let me first say before I read this, there's nothing wrong with this description. It's great in the context of the website. I'm just start using it as a starting point and then we'll fine tune from here. Here's what it says. For African American women, prenatal care often fails to account for the need of culturally focused care that considers the role of institutional and interpersonal racism in their day-to-day -day experiences and encounters in the healthcare system. This study seeks to test the hypothesis that access to culturally focused care is a predictor of improved health outcomes, including family cohesion and empowerment, and management of psychosocial stress during pregnancy. Understanding and documenting best practices for culturally centered prenatal care is a secondary goal of this project. That's great for other researchers and subject matter experts, but for potential partners, influencers, funders, and policymakers, it's missing the value connection and the why. So when I worked with Rachel on fine tuning her message, here's where she went. Black women are nearly four times more likely to die in childbirth than white women. Black babies are at greater risk of dying in their first year of life or of being born too soon or too small. Compare that to the overall US population where healthy birth rates have improved. The fact that these gaps for black women and babies are growing is not an accident, it's racism. There's her why, why is she doing this work? My goal is to ensure that all women can have a safe, positive and healthy birth. My research looks at how structural racism affects that goal. That is, how certain conditions were created to make it harder for black moms and babies to thrive. I'm searching for opportunities to dismantle those conditions that let racism persist. Much of my work looks at how racism shapes African American women's day-to-day -day experiences and encounters in the healthcare system. For example, at Roots Community Birth Center, midwives see lots of women who are very stressed out by racism, particularly the risks it brings to black boys and men. So if they learn they're carrying a black boy, their stress goes up even more. And stress during pregnancy is very harmful for both mom and baby. By training providers to think about race and racism, the team at Roots is helping them rethink the way tests and other practices are done and to help women make decisions and evaluate information in a culturally focused way. One thing I'm really excited about right now is the way I'm partnering directly with the community. I'm not studying it from afar and writing a journal article. I'm right in the community creating real change with the people here. 
I'm in a leadership program called Interdisciplinary Research Leaders that supports this kind of work. I hope you'll follow along on my blog and learn with me and help identify and challenge structural racism when you see it. So there's Rachel's longer form message that takes that academic description of her project and puts it into this values-based why format. And she can use the same format to boil that down into a 15 second message like this. My goal is to ensure that all women can have a safe and healthy birth. Right now in the US, that's not the case. Black women and babies are more likely to die in childbirth. My research looks at the structural racism behind that fact and identifies ways we can break down racism and provide better care. Same structure, less detail, clear message. That modified message by Rachel hits her key points. It avoids acronyms and jargon, and it's understandable in a conversation with a neighbor who doesn't work in this field and isn't a researcher. For those of you who do research, I know this raises concerns about dumbing it down or leaping to conclusions you're not ready to draw, and that's not what I'm suggesting at all. Think about it more as a way to boost the impact and importance of your work, not by laying out every single technical detail, but by telling a story that connects with people's values. You can hang more details on every point. If you're going from 15 seconds to a full research paper, the same format still works. The bottom line here is that you're using a simple framework to structure your message and frame it around values. You can also use the same framework to adapt your story for different audiences. Again, start with values and what your audiences value, and it may be different depending on who you're talking to. For example, there's an interdisciplinary research leaders team that's using technology to educate and connect pregnant women and support their providers in rural areas. If they're talking with medical professionals, they might lead with a story about a provider in a rural area who, as the only local doctor, now has access to a whole network of specialists and peers to work with, and how she feels like a stronger doctor as a result. If they're talking with technology providers, they might tell a story about how telehealth and other medical technology innovations made a difference for one family, and then illuminate the opportunities for others in tech to look at how to influence the health system and health delivery for medical providers. And if they're talking with community members, they'll probably tell a story about how isolating it can be to be pregnant, especially for the first time in a rural community, and how many women in rural areas don't have a strong support system, and struggle with basic needs in housing, food and nutrition, self-care, and care of their baby. They'll talk about how this project links them with community peer educators who use technology to form a community and deliver engaging education. Same message, different audiences and values, different details. So this may not come naturally. You've talked about your work in a certain way for a long time. And if you're a researcher, you're used to talking in very detail laden language to get funding and bring other researchers on board. So this is a shift. So here's what I ask. Please commit to writing out your message using the values-based, why-driven format. And you don't have to do this by yourself. If you're a member of a team, it's great to do this with your team and come up with a message for the whole team that each of you then can adapt for your own work. If you're working on your own, bring together a group of people, preferably those who don't do the same thing you do, and describe to them what you do. See what sticks, what lights them up, what gives them questions, and continue fine-tuning your message that way, trying different angles and values and approaches depending on what you're hearing from your test audiences. Then commit to practicing your message two to three times over the next week and keep adapting it as you go. Each week, refine it a little bit more. Keep practicing, keep telling your story. Also take a look at the other video module in this series that talks to you about how to take that message and use it in an effective interview. So you have it handy. Here's your values-based message format one more time. Take a screenshot and put this to use in the coming weeks. You are an amazing leader creating change in your community and building a culture of health across our country. An essential part of leadership is communication and the ability to inspire people from many walks of life. Your message and your story hold great power. We can't wait to hear them. Thanks. <laughs>